Gregory, thanks for being here. Nice to be with you. So one of the big things that's happened in the last couple of weeks is this UN report that came out mm -hmm. and basically said that if we don't do something about global warming now, it could threaten America's food supply and the mm -hmm. entire world's food security. Mm -hmm. You're the head of a food company. What does it look like to, to hear something like that, to read something like that? Well, I think the impact of the IPCC report is to get people's attention, to get more conversation started. I think they feel, and probably rightly so, that there's been a little bit of a lull in the conversation about how exposed are we. I think one of the things that leads to that complacency is the fact that people's histories are very short when it comes to food. The world raised a wonderful crop last year. It's reflected in the way prices have fallen in uh, the intervening eight or nine months. And so keeping the energy around this topic, uh, we think, is important. Is, is the report, they don't claim that they know, but they do claim, and perhaps rightly so, that we should be more attentive and, and there should be more focus. Now, prices are falling for food in certain area. They're mm -hmm. rising in mm -hmm. other places. They are. Where are you seeing that in your business? Well, clearly in the U.S., because of some disease-related supply problems, we've seen the price of pork go up rather dramatically. In the case of dairy, dairy prices are quite high, but it's after a long period of very poor profitability for dairymen. And as you would expect, based on classical economics, during periods of losses, they uh, thinned their herds. And now as the economy has come back and, and demands continued to grow with Greek yogurt, which has been a blessing for many in the, in the food business, and I think for consumers, a very nutritious product, but it uses a lot more milk than more conventional yogurts. And so we've seen a spike. Clearly the prices are high enough that dairymen will respond and the supply of milk will rise. But I think in each case there's a different story. So you can't put it to one issue that we just have burgeoning food inflation across the, the whole sphere. Clearly the drought in Brazil has impacted coffee. When do you think that starts to hit American consumers here? At what point do prices rise so much that they go to the grocery store and say, you know what, I'm not going to get pork today? Mm -hmm. I, I think it varies clearly by people's socioeconomic status. I'd have to believe that already in the case of beef prices, which are at very high levels, that, that people have either switched to, to chicken or pork or they have uh, elected to buy a less expensive cut of beef than they may have purchased in the past. For your industry, another big push right now is this push to label genetically modified foods. What do you think about that? Well, <clears throat> I think that we as an industry need to enlist consumers in a comfort level with science in their food system. I think today I use the comment that we can't expect to feed 9 billion increasingly prosperous people using medieval farming practices. And so as science plays a role in allowing us to grow more food on less land using less water, that we can only do that if society is comfortable with the technologies that we bring into their food space. And so I think we need to simultaneously have voluntary labeling that allows consumers that want to buy organic foods or foods that explicitly do not include uh, GMOs. And I think we have that system today and we need to continue and encourage that. At the same time, I think to compel labeling in the hopes of perhaps discrediting or diminishing the safety or the quality or the efficacy of GMOs in the food system will be a long-term mistake. Great. Gregory Page, thanks for joining us. Thank you.